You seem to be training him to be a warrior. Is that entirely wise? Jimmy never tried in anger, or use it for your own gain. You will be a knight Templar, soldier in the service of God. Leave Jerusalem without giving that. And you and your brother Templars will have safe passage wherever you wish. My duty is to protect Jerusalem. Even if the decision was mine to make, my answer would still be no. Then you will die. It's all in the hands of God. You swear to uphold the principles of our order and all that for which we stand, and never to share our secrets nor divulge the true nature of our work, and to do so from now until death, whatever the cost. Together, we will usher in the door. Welcome, Eagles, to another episode of Tradcat Night Radio. I am Eric Kajewski, founder and owner of Tradcat Night, the most followed traditional Catholic page on the internet, and home to the New Crusade. I want to thank all those new uh, who are listening in for the first time to Tradcat Night Radio. I want to um, thank all those who have been uh, sending kind messages over the past few days. Uh, in this continued fight against modernism, against pseudo-traditionalism, and of course against state of occultism. And uh, this evening's talk is going to be uh, the breaking news that happened today uh, in, in relation to the SXPX being recognized by the modernist church, by modernist Rome, uh, in Argentina. And we'll discuss that a little bit and break that down a little bit more uh, with some analysis uh, but before we get into tonight's talk, which may be a little bit more uh, brief, um, we always want to go before our Blessed Virgin Mary. We want to implore the Immaculate Heart so that we may receive those graces from the Sacred Heart for this uh, upcoming week. Um, for those who have special intentions for uh, their own lives and their families, I'll be praying for you all. And uh, so let us go before Our Lady and pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Real briefly, let's get into some administrative uh, functions real briefly. Uh, again, upcoming projects for Tradcat Night. We have the CERN video upcoming. We have the new Eagle message, which should be out before uh, the end of April. Uh, we have a few more blogs, a special message entitled uh, Wills Unbroken, uh, which will be out shortly, maybe over the next few days. I had a special blog uh, relayed today, uh, a portion, a piece, if you will, uh, from my upcoming book, Fortress of the Soul, uh, and its concern concerns deals with uh, how we should not doubt Christ in these dark times. We should rely on the divine providence. He obviously has a plan. He knows how to be merciful and just at the same time, and therefore we need to walk through uh, this dark period, if you will, with a smile on our face to continue to be the salt and light of the earth. So, for those who have not checked out uh, that blog yet, please uh, do so. It's called Doubt Me Not. We also have uh, 
a few more uh, individuals to uh, recognize with their recent donations over the past few days, which again uh, are most necessary and appreciative. Again, this is an information war, and if we're going to conquer modernism, pseudo-traditionalism, and all the other errors uh, in the church, I need your financial support in just maintaining what we have already, but then also uh, growing it and getting our information more mainstream out into the public because once it's tapped into essentially no doubt there will be people who see the logic and what we say and ultimately arrive at our position as has been happening uh, so often over this past month I can't tell you how many people even over the past few months who after one conversation I have with them they no longer attend a Neo SXPX chapel uh, and for good reason uh, so nevertheless we have uh, Peter Coons Peter Kuhn and we have uh, Carol uh, Quine, both of the United States, uh, who made contributions over the last few days. And again, it is most necessary and appreciative. Uh, again, we don't have to necessarily break, break the bank, although I am very appreciative of the $100, $50 gifts. If you can just donate $10, uh, that, is, that is great too. Uh, every little bit counts, and I put it right to use within the matter of uh, a few days. Uh, in uh, reinvesting it back into this apostolate and getting our information out there to the mainstream. Uh, so what we have tonight uh, as a talk, uh, but I guess before we get into that, let's handle, I guess, a, f a few of the more general news topics. Again, I promised you that I would at least uh, touch base touch base with that. Um, uh, with every one of these uh, radio shows. Uh, the propaganda that seems to be coming out lately here with the, the, the general news seems to be uh, potential outbreaks, uh, epidemics that are now being put out there in the public wherein the propagandist mainstream news is reporting that these serious outbreaks could be on the horizons which would kill you know, 80,000, 100,000, half a million. Uh, and today there was another... Uh, article relating to a antibiotic resistant bacteria uh, that is continuing to sweep the nation and may in time uh, mutate and kill thousands of people. Uh, and again, the reason why I bring this up is because part of the third secret of Fatima relates to, uh, as Father Martin had indicated, who read it, uh, that there would be epi epidemics that would wipe out uh, whole nations overnight. Uh, this is also referred to by the New World Order as the Great Culling. Uh, so don't buy into the propaganda. And I'm not saying that it's not going to happen. I mean, obviously, uh, these these New World Order agents uh, seek to reduce the masses, if you will. And uh, ultimately, these things are going to happen. But it's going to do you no good to go out and get vaccines which are equally as poisonous. Uh, in some cases, not only do they slow kill, they will paralyze you right on the spot instant deaths there's been reported I know I've reported that before in the past and you know so they're setting up propaganda for the whole vaccine program uh, so please do not buy into it maybe one night we'll cover uh, vaccines and the great culling uh, in particular just for for one episode uh, so you need to know uh, that is out there obviously we have uh, Rubio and Clinton now uh, stating their their going to be ru running for president. Let's just be clear with ourselves. I know I have a lot of Republicans. I know I have a lot of Libertarians even who are following now. Uh, the, the the reps and the Dems are run by these New World Order agents, by these certain Jews who use these individuals as pawns. Um, certainly Hillary Clinton is no different. And so uh, we don't want to try to be Debbie Downer, but how this country will potentially get back on track is going to be through God's chastisement and then ultimately <clears throat> by reestablishing uh, what God wills and this is eventually going to be to set up uh, America uh, within the structure of a Catholic monarchy setting our uh, constitution up as a Catholic constitution uh, and getting rid of all these uh, Masonic principles that we have in our constitution because that's what our uh, country was sadly founded upon. It was founded upon in Protestant Protestantism, uh, Americanism, which is religious liberty, 
and uh, ultimately masonry. So sadly, as much as you know, I love this country and I know all of you do, we have never been founded upon in truly godly principles. We've been founded upon in revolutionary uh, Protestant principles, and so we truly can't say we've never been one nation under God, because if the true God came to this earth, which he did, Jesus Christ, and established that one religion, and the country does not support that one religion, uh, then you're, in, you're then you're in big trouble. You've already set yourself up for disaster, uh, and again, hence the heresy of Americanism. Uh, so, just wanted to throw that out there uh, to you uh, this evening. We also have uh, more uh, earthquakes, which have recently been happening. There was a, another one or a cluster of them happening out in the Los Angeles area. Uh, they were more moderate. They were not. Uh, large by any indication, but um, again, what we have to understand and realize is that our Lord said that there would be earthquakes in diverse places, which which is what we're seeing. Of course, they're going to pick up in intensity, but we just need to know they're starting to happen even all over America, right? We've had some in the past few years, even as far east as uh, Virginia, uh, out here in the Midwest, we've had them, and then again, here recently, the new Madrid uh, seems to be waking up with uh, several more relatively uh, moderate earthquakes in, in the 4.0 region. But that area seems to be waking up as well. Of course, we've had uh, Oklahoma uh, in the past few weeks too. So they're happening not only uh, diversely all throughout the world, they're happening uh, in diverse fashion here in America. So uh, we have to look forward to uh, that ultimately being a sign, as Blessed Sister Ayala said, if people did not recognize these scourges that another terrible war from the east would come to the west, which ultimately is going to happen after the soon uh, false peace treaty. Uh, we also have, let's see, some more World War III propaganda. You know, we see the, the deals going on between Russia and Iran, uh, Russia and China. Uh, Rus a Russian fighter jet was just uh, intercepted. Uh, over the Baltic Sea, and there, there's a buildup there between NATO now and uh, Russia. Uh, so you can look for continued propaganda to ultimately uh, get the masses, if you will, into buying into that a World War III is imminent. And ultimately, based upon that, they will probably induce martial law, global martial law, shortly before... Um, you know, the peace and safety aspect of it is taken away and Russia does finally uh, make moves militarily, which they will. Uh, but nevertheless, this is something we have to look forward to. Uh, we see a lot of articles concerning the buildup within our own country uh, in terms of training of the National Guard uh, for some supposed big uh, exercise, if you will, uh, in this country. Obviously, they're... they're they know what's coming. They know Planet X is coming. Uh, they know the, the the propaganda is building building up uh, towards the arrival of Planet X with all the epidemics, all the man-made epidemics. We of course have World War III. They're they're setting the world up for a fake uh, alien uh, invasion too. By the way, for those who are not privy to that, through Project Blue Beam. Uh, and that's actually what ties into the whole chemtrail phenomena is not only is that uh, poisons which are falling down that is actually creating an atmosphere in the air to where they can now uh, create holographic images. And I know I've showed that to you before uh, in various videos where they have now false uh, Marian apparitions down in Africa. And they have this technology, uh, so we cannot be deceived in, in these times. We also have Facebook, who now is saying that they can track people even more intimately, and they're taking this information from your Facebook profile and kind of uh, shoving it along, if you will, to other uh, third parties. And again, at this point, I've said, whether it's Facebook, whether it's your phone, whether it's this or that, whether it's how you vote, they profile you no matter what. There's nowhere to hide. So uh, individuals who think they're going to hide you know, one way or another, I hate to break the sad reality to you, but one way or another, they can profile you. Uh, so it does no good to uh, essentially try to hide in that sense. Uh, and then uh, last but not least, and we'll kind of close it with the general news for uh, this evening, we also have 
more World War III propaganda uh, with the Islamic State now calling for attacks on American homeland and they're promising another 9-11. And this kind of recalls my talk with Bob Fletcher, the, the government insider, who said that it's basically on the books from his inside sources that they were going to try to get across multiple 9-11 type attacks within a two-week period to get the masses into such fear that they would eventually accept big government in this this takeover, if you will, uh, and they'll be able to I implement uh, you know the FEMA camps and uh, global martial law not only here in America but you know I'm sure the propaganda is over there in Europe too, uh, in Russia and also in the Middle East. So it, it works both ways. You know these Zionists, these these certain fake Jews who have control of the media, who have control of the various uh, nations to a large degree. They play both sides of the of the fence. Uh, and so ultimately they do want people to go to war with each other and kill each other. Uh, so that what they are left with, what the world is reduced to, that they can control them more easily is how they look at it. Uh, now we know they're going to be stupid enough to go underground when Planet X comes and that will be our loophole, uh, so to speak, to where we will take over and uh, hopefully lock them down there for good, if they even survive. Uh, so nevertheless, we will wrap up that particular uh, portion of this radio show. And uh, we want to now uh, move on to our main talk, which consists of the breaking news that uh, modernist Rome uh, now has apparently recognized the uh, SXPX, the neo SXPX, as quote unquote Catholic in Argentina. Now, of course, when when this broke, I sent it over uh, really quickly. Actually, I I broke the news right after Non Possimus had put it up, and I sent it over to some people and sent it over to uh, Father Paul Kramer. And nevertheless, we've been on social media outlets today, primarily Facebook, and helping people understand why this isn't a good thing. Uh, and so this all ties back to what Archbishop Lefebvre has said concerning this crisis, meaning we use fundamentally Archbishop Lefebvre's position uh, as, as a basis, if you will, and we work off of that basis, his analysis, and so we simply say that Rome since Vatican II has been modernist. It's not Catholic. This conciliar church that they have constructed, this new church on the objective level, is not the Catholic church. And hence lies the problem now with these, these pseudo-traditionalist groups. Uh, because to some degree, form or fashion, they've broken from that. And they essentially say, well, this is Catholic. We just have some prelates. We have popes making mistakes. And so there's an infinite chasm between what Arch Archbishop Lefebvre said and what we and the resistance still say. Because for those of you out there who may be you know, figuring things out in the crisis, who were even attending the new SXPX, if you're looking for what Archbishop Lefebvre truly taught, you're not going to find it in the new SXPX. They can throw up some loose quotes here or there, put it, paste it on uh, DG, post it on the Society of St. Pius X. They're not following what Archbishop Lefebvre taught. Uh, both in his analysis, but then also in his position concerning uh, recon reconciling with modernist Rome. And that's the key thing is you no longer hear that term from the new SXPX and you've never heard it from the pseudo the other pseudo-traditionalist poisonous groups, you know, such as FSSP or Institute the Christ King or Good Shepherd or even the poisonous pseudo-trad uh, outlets such as Rorarte. Then you have Remnant, which is equally as poisonous. And then, of course, you have Dici, but... Uh, my point is, is they're, they're all pseudo-traditionalists, and, and the new SXPX is kind of a hybrid pseudo-traditionalist group, which now accepts uh, Vatican II 95% in light of tradition, meaning they're accepting this whole nonsense of the hermeneutics of continuity. Uh, and as Catholics, we can't accept Vatican II, period. End of story. There's no accepting... There's no accepting 95% of it. It was written by modernists. It was written by liberals. It, it's born out of heresy. It comes not only from a spirit of heresy, it is heresy. The documents, there's heresy in the documents themselves, and I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but we've already covered this enough, where the Religious uh, Liberty Declaration of Paula VI makes that council null and void. Well, that is no longer the position of the neo SXPX, and that's quite obvious uh, in how they not only deal with us, 
because that's that's the one thing you have to realize is if there was no position change they wouldn't be trying to quell those who were actually trying to show the differences and many times these individuals were booted out I can think of one story there was an older gentleman in his 80s who had been in the the, the SXPX his whole life who was simply trying to do that trying to relay information uh, to show other people uh, in the in their chapels that uh, via truetrad.com or my website and there's other good resistance uh, related websites out there the recusant and he was simply booted out for quote unquote you know having a bad spirit and so we're seeing all of these kinds of um, psychological uh, manipulation uh, it's, it's truly a psychological warfare uh, going on in USXPX those who those who are following still in there are very much brainwashed and uh, if I can kind of throw this in and interject this in while we're talking about, I've had a chance to talk to a few people who are still in the US XPX, and it becomes quite clear to me, and again, I do this for a living on a daily basis. I'm assuming 99% of you actually go out and, and go to like a 9 to 5 or do that. I mean, this is what I do all day, uh, you know, amidst working in between uh, the contemplative life, my prayer life. Uh, but this is what I do, and so I have a larger sampler size, I guess you can say, sample size of dealing with individuals from all various camps, whether state of a contest, this or that, uh, pseudo-traditionalists. And it becomes more evident to me, as we continue on in this crisis in the new SXPX, that these individuals in the new SXPX simply can't think. They have no, they have no use of logic. They have no use of right reason. Uh, and this was further evidenced today by someone who is simply trying to say that our position is illogical when I simply laid out the quotes of Archbishop Lefebvre and said, this is what we maintain and hold to, how is that illogical? And then, of course, you get the, the constant, you know, you're a state of a contest, as if that really uh, would be a bad thing, even though we're against it. These pseudo-traditionalist types, they try to use it to make it sound like it's heretical and schismatic, when it isn't. In and of itself, it's not heresy uh, and schismatic, and again, you have individuals who have no idea what they're talking about theology, theologically, and they haven't studied these things very intimately, and so they don't understand uh, that the church, the Holy See, has never come down on the position that it is possible of a long period of uh, state of a conte. Uh, again, even though we don't agree with that analysis, we say that it is error. Uh, you know, this this is what we're up against, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, so it's very, very difficult to try to speak sense into someone who doesn't have sense. And so this relays back to what I've been saying now for this past week, that Bishop Filet is now really trying to sell uh, that propaganda uh, that, you know, that they're healthy and growing. Well, first of all, he's not healthy. He's not theologically healthy. He's got theological Ebola. He's got theological leprosy, and he's dying. And he's taking, other, he's taking others down on the sunken ship with him. Uh, and so, and then you took a, take a look at those who are attending the o, the Neo SXPX. And again, I'm not speaking for everyone because I happen to know uh, some people who still attend the Neo SXPX who more or less think like us. And I have no idea why they still attend because uh, it's highly logical to continue to uh, stay in the Neo SXPX at this point. Uh, but nevertheless, more generally speaking, you really are dealing with the dopey Joe types, people who just can't think. And so, what I'm saying is, if you've got someone who's already unhealthy theologically, someone who is f falling t uh, deeper and deeper uh, in in this what I just call theological leprosy or theological Ebola, then you then you it runs downward and now you're attracting others of that type. So it doesn't matter if the neo society grew to you know five million people, it's still going to be a gigantic cancerous tumor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, you know, Bishop Filet can try to sell that to his people all, all he wants, that they're healthy, and, you know, and they're growing, but again, a cancerous tumor uh, grows just as well. Uh, and you'll, you'll see uh, further articles uh, down the road uh, trying to sell trying to sell more people into this position uh, that we should be uh, integrated back into the modernist church. Now, a few points here. Uh, if I can. Well, first of all, let's go to the Archbishop himself, who asked, when asked, talks about, uh, talking about uh, being integrated back into the conciliar church. Uh, you know, this is just a famous quote of his, so everyone can hear this, so that they understand that what Bishop Flay is doing is what he wants to do. It's not doing what his founder set up and uh, was trying to pass along. And here goes the quote. 
we would have to re-enter this conciliar church in order to supposedly make it Catholic. That is a complete illusion. It's not the subjects that make the superiors, but the superiors who make the subjects. Amongst the whole Roman Curia, amongst all the world's bishops who are progressives, I would have been completely swamped. I would have uh, been able to do nothing. Uh, and then he goes on to say, I don't think that this is a true return to tradition when he's talking about the quote-unquote conservative bishops, and that's one point I'd like to bring up. Conservatism, cause conservatism excuse me, will not save your soul. Catholicism will. So these individuals, uh, such as uh, Bishop uh, Schneider, the Cardinal Burks, these individuals are still not Catholics. That's, that's what people have to understand. They're still following Vatican II. They're still following the new religion. Although they say in one breath, well, that you know, the SXPX is not schismatic, and the other the other breath, they're not willing to say publicly that this the problem is Vatican II. The problem is Vatican II modernism, the new orientation, uh, Vatican II new orientation, uh, and you know, until these these prelates do that, we have we can do nothing. All we can do is we, we can sit from a distance. We still recognize they have jurisdiction, but they have to uh, repent. Uh, and so that's ultimately what Archbishop Lefebvre's position was. Uh, and those in the the upper hierarchy uh, of the Neo-Society know this. They know this. They're just trying to uh, very carefully um, get across what they're trying to get across while making it appear that they're actually following uh, what Archbishop Lefebvre uh, had said. So, again, the news today, and it was publicized all over. You know, we had R Rorarte, uh who put it, uh, put it out there too this afternoon, and I'll just take a little excerpt from there and give some analysis. They say, uh, concerning this uh, recognition by uh, modernist Rome, and again, uh, Rorarte Cielli is a uh, pseudo-traditionalist, poisonous publication. They're coming at it from the wrong side of the fence. They're not coming at it from the tradition side. Uh, they're they're dressed up modernists and liberals. Uh, and again, they they all the pseudo-traditionalists come in different flavors and different degrees. Uh, and again, we have to remember that it's this isn't a battle uh, simply for the Latin Mass. This is a, this is a battle first doctrinally, and you know, simply trying to resist a few things the, the Pope might say and try to fit yourself in the conciliar church is not a sufficient answer. That's certainly not how, not how St. Athanasius uh, would have responded to uh, the heresy of his times, and certainly with modernism, it is the synthesis of all her heresies. So we're dealing with not only heresy in the Council of Vatican II, but subsequently heresy and heresy and heresy has been growing. Uh, and again, I don't I'm going to have to take the time out now to, to cover all that, but uh, I'm sure uh, some of you know some of these uh, heresies by now. And again, they largely come uh, from Freemasonry, um, and so we cannot, we cannot pretend to be Catholic and be a part of this uh, supposed quote-unquote church that is literally teaching revolutionary principles and things that have been infallibly condemned. So, back to <clears throat> what Rorarte has said. They state, Does this signal an imminent doctrinal and canonical uh, reproachment between Rome and the SXPX? It would not seem so. From the SXPX su Superior General, uh, Bishop Fillet, qualification that this favor was solicited to ease uh, the visa and residency problems of the SXPX members, assigned to Argentina, uh, the SXPX could have easily have obtained, as almost every other confession, state recognition in, in Argentina if, if it had requested recognition as a separate body for merely civil law purposes, which the SXPX refused to request. What is important is that the, this, demonst this demonstrates both the SXPX resolved not to be an independent church not to be seen as outside the Catholic Church, and ev evidently Rome's recognition that the SXPX is essentially Catholic. Now, here's the problem, and again, this is coming from the poisonous pseudo-traditionalist Rorarte publication, who is, for all intents and purposes, not holding the Catholic faith. Um, point being, uh, the first point, 
if Rome is modernist, which has always been Archbishop Lefebvre's position, modernists have an erroneous perception of what it is to even be Catholic. Francis right now, and again, there's there's a growing number of us who don't even believe Francis is Pope, but let's just, for sake of this example, let's just say Francis is Pope. Uh, Francis uh, is a modernist. He has He doesn't have the proper understanding of what it is to be a Catholic. Now, when they go ahead and they say, the Neo Essex PX is essentially Catholic. What is that really saying about the Neo Society? If those who are saying uh, that the, the society is Catholic and they're not even Catholic to begin with, <laughs> okay? I don't. Th I don't think a lot of people pick that up. I I put that out there on uh, social media, and people f finally were, were were getting that. If you have people who are not even holding the Catholic faith, which these modernists do not, these Vatican II modernists do not have the Catholic faith. It's a new subjectivist religion. It's loaded with heresy. It's a landmine of heresy in the Vatican II New Church. Okay, and they're saying, well, yeah, the society is Catholic. <laughs> and they don't even hold the Catholic faith. That's scary. That would scare me if I if I were the, uh, the leader of a traditional group and modernist room was, was telling me that I am now Catholic. It, to me, it seems, and I, I threw this out here a little while ago, it seems like France is getting itchy. You know, th this formal schism is coming and they're trying to bait the, the Neo SXPX uh, even further, you know, even sucking them in further. They probably see how a lot of people are falling out of the Neo SXPX uh, and maybe they want to get things moving uh, more quickly. Uh, I don't know. But nevertheless, y you see all over the internet now how these pseudo traditionalists are, are getting really giddy over this. Wow, the church, is, the church is recognizing the SXPX when this is not a good thing, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a good thing to be recognized as Catholic from heretics who don't even hold the Catholic faith. Um, and so uh, this also speaks uh, to the obvious uh, position position change uh, of the Neo-SXPX, because we had Archbishop Lefebvre, who clearly taught uh, in his writings, he, he did not want to be recognized. He did not want to be recognized by this conciliar church. He wanted to remain Catholic, and he understood that to be Catholic was to have the appearance of remaining on the outside. And therein lies the problem, which I have analyzed over and over again with you. Many of you know this. Okay, again, you have the poisonous Rorarte saying they don't want to be seen as independent. They don't want to be seen as outside the Catholic Church. Well, this speaks to self-love, ladies and gentlemen. Please don't be fooled by the propaganda that we're just we're trying to save souls when you see the evidence behind what they have done to those simply trying to maintain Archbishop Lefebvre's position the denial of sacraments uh, you know the the scandals out in Europe where they're breaking into now resistance priests priests uh, computers to futz around with what what certain priests have actually said this is all diabolical activity I'm not even going to get into all of it uh, lest I be uh, accused of serious things, but my point is, is the behavior that follows their new position only supports that there is a position change, and they want to squash, they want to squell uh, all those who simply are resisting them, and guess what, I've run into a number of these knuckleheads online, such as Michael Sastak, and I can guarantee you if we met in public, <laughs> they would find out that after the first few minutes, they were not going to be able to speak as they think they can speak online to me. Okay, the bottom line is is we need to silence these people. We need to silence these people. These, these people need to understand that we're here, we're not going anywhere, and we are growing healthily. Uh, again, I've talked about this, uh, you know, enough that the resistance is, is actually uh, growing a lot. Um, it's growing a lot uh, more, how should I say this? I can't really say it's, it's, it's growing fast, but it's, it's growing more so than what people... Uh, probably initially had expected after this uh, short period uh, since 2012. And more and more people, once they sit and they educate themselves on the crisis uh, within the new SXPX, and they, they understand, okay, that Rome is modernist. And that, that's, the whole, that's the whole key thing right there, is these pseudo-traditionalist groups do not see heresy. They hate the H word. They want to run from it. Uh, and so that's why we have to keep our distance from them. They're poison. They have theological Ebola. They have theological uh, leprosy. And Menzingen and Bishop Filet are no different. They are pseudo-traditionalists. They're trying to be suckered in uh, to the Vatican II uh, cult of man 
And again, those who argue, you know, they can do good, the new SXPX can do good by going in. I've already just laid out the argument that those who are in the society itself now, by and large, are already diseased themselves. They're just going to carry the <laughs> disease on to something that's already diseased. Uh, so in that sense, we're, we're really kind of separating, uh, we're, we're really starting to separate the chaff from the wheat now. You know, we let them go. If they really want to go in there, you know, as poisoned as they are, let them go. You know, let them go. Uh, you know, Jesus Christ uh, is not the, the, the author of uh, confusion. He certainly is not behind compromise. And a Catholic cannot accept uh, anything less that Vatican II uh, was not Catholic. Now, if I wet, may interject uh, what Father Kramer uh, had to say today, if I can, uh, on several fronts. Uh, first, it was asked concerning uh, the whole visa question. Um, uh, by a certain individual on Facebook, and uh, Father Kramer had r responded that um, uh, these particular individuals had to become uh, an association of the diocesan right in order to gain the legal status that they acquired, just like the Catholics in China's. China must be affiliated with the Patriotic Association to gain legal recognition. Their motive may be to get visas. But what good is it to get visas if they must sell their souls to get them? And this is what we've been saying all along concerning this whole I'm trying to be recognized again, which just oozes with self-love and pride uh, by some wayward prelates who um, think and have this appearance that they're trying to do good in terms of the whole you know, salvation of soul business, the, the whole rhetoric they're trying to give them. But again, their actions speak louder than words. Uh, the point is, uh, it is illogical to be uh, recognized uh, by heretics, and and so nevertheless we have to uh, stay away from that position. It's it's simply illogical. See, true charity demands true charity, right? Demands Rome's repentance before any sort of recognition. I'll say that again so it sinks into everyone. True charity, true prudence demands Rome's repentance before any sort of formal agreement or recognition. Now, again, those who keep saying, well, it's not going to come to that. Yeah, it's already it already has. Open up your eyes. Stop being so prideful. It happened in 2012. Bishop Fillet in 2012 was already willing to throw away the Catholic faith in return for a recognition. So please don't give me that nonsense. Please don't come into my social media outlets and say that nonsense. Use your brain. You've got a brain. Use it. Okay, it already has happened in 2012. Uh, so they've demonstrated themselves to uh, give away. They wanted to give away um, something, uh, you know, in return for this supposed recognition. A recognition that is not necessary, and Archbishop Lefebvre simply laughed about it. Uh, and so uh, let me get back to what uh, Father Paul Kramer had to say concerning uh, this particular topic in general. Father Kramer goes on to say this morning, there is nothing normal about coming into communion with and under obedience to Bergoglio's new church. Bergoglio is the spearhead, excuse me, of the apostasy. By aligning itself with heretical conciliar Rome, the SXPX will not be fu integrated fully into the church, but will be going out of communion with the Catholic Church and into communion with New Church. The bonds of communion are, one, faith, two, worship, and three, ecclesiastical governance. The conciliar church breaks the first by teaching heresy, the second by replacing the right handed down, Council of Constance, Session 39, with a new right. Uh, and I'll just add, uh, Council of Trent also verifies that uh, infallibly. And the third, by enforcing its schismatic rites and false doctrines. It is not those who remain in communion with Catholicism by adhering to tradi tradition who stay outside the church, thinking they have created something better, right? He just, Father Paul just laid into Rorarte right there. Because Rorarte is, is, is making this insinuation that it you know, this appearance of being an independent church, and that's why you can't follow Rorarte. They always have erroneous analysis uh, concerning this crisis. 
but picking up, Father Kramer goes on to say, it is Concilia Rome that has created the innovations in doctrine and liturgy, thereby breaking communion with Catholicism and creating a new religion. The SXPX does not seek, does not need to seek to become integrated fully into the church. Under Archbishop Lefebvre, it remained fully integrated in the church already. You see, there's no need of a recognition. It is Bergoglio, Bergoglio New Church that needs to be brought back into communion with Catholicism and thus become integrated fully back into the church, right? So this goes back to my point. True charity demands and dictates at this point that modernist Rome repents and comes back to the Catholic faith, right? Not the new SXPX uh, going out in self-love trying to gain uh, recognition for the, for, the, for the sake of appearance, right? We're not interested in appearances right now. No Catholic should be uh, interested in trying to gain approval by those who don't even hold the Catholic faith, you see. And again, the new SXPX does not believe that anymore. They don't believe Rome is modernist, and so they can get away with their position. And that's why you must not donate. You must not go to their chapels. You must avoid their poison. Otherwise, you're going to turn into one of these individuals that I have to deal with on a nightly basis, who I don't even know how they tie their shoes sometimes, honestly. And I, I say that, you know, I'm, I'm not really trying to de degrade anyone, but I'm, I'm being very serious with you. The critical thinking skills on some of these individuals who are going to the Neo Society is frightening. It's frightening. It's maddening almost. Uh, and I can only spend about five minutes with them, and that's about, that's about all the tolerance level I have for them right now. I can only pray and suffer for these individuals, but again, when we're speaking about being healthy in the neo society, you better think again because it's largely poisoned, and the individuals who are going to their to their chapels are are honestly just as clueless as those being led by it. Uh, as sad as that sounds. Uh, so, again, w what good does it do to be uh, in obedience to someone if? those prelates of that pope was not first obedient to the Catholic faith is simply illogical, right? As Father Kramer uh, said very uh, very comically today, but it, it, it drives home a point. He said that, you know, the neo-society trying to become a Protestant to convert the Protestants you know, from the, from the quote-unquote inside. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, and so this is where you as laymen are going to have to sit down, do your homework, and first come to the realization that you need to stay away from the propaganda of the SXPX. You need to stay away from the nonsense that, uh, you know, the, the psychological warfare, if you will. We can prove all of our points objectively on paper. We can show the deviations from what Archbishop Lefebvre maintained and what I deemed the hardline true traditionalist position and now the hybrid new position of the, the society, which essentially is will accept 95% of the council. And I remember that one day, because quite honestly, uh, you know, I don't know how long ago it was, I guess, I guess it was in 2012, and I had never heard of the remnant at that point. You know, it was like Michael Matt was all get, getting giddy over this, that, you know, after the, the talks in 2012, well, now the SXPX now accepts, you know, 95% of the council, as if that's a good thing. So if you ever want to see evidence of how Michael Matt is poisoned, <laughs> that was evidence to me. Uh, you know, we shouldn't be getting uh, giddy over that. You know, Vatican II is not the Catholic religion. It's not the Catholic faith. So we must avoid poison, right? Whether it's 0.1% poison or if it's 1% poison. If you knew there was a cup and there was 1% poison in it, would you drink it? Even, you know, even a full glass of water, full glass of whatever, orange juice. You know, no, you would not. Uh, and so, again, that's why I say these pseudo-traditions, they come in different flavors, shapes, and sizes, if you will, to degrees of pseudo-traditionalism. There's ones more uh, uh, steeped, if you will, uh, into modernism and liberalism, and they, they've got like 50, 60, 70, 80 percent poison. And then you've got the Neo 6PX, who is still poisoned. It's, it may be not as bad as the FSSP or Institute the Christ the King, but it's still a hybrid version of it, and you can't be there. You can't go there. You're endangering your soul. Uh, and the last I heard, actually, someone can actually clear this up. Uh, maybe some of those who, who run other resistance sites uh, can, can verify this. But I also heard, too, recently that the Neo SXPX is now uh, starting up classes, I guess, uh, for after mass, where they're actually now trying to teach against the resistance, like having classes designed 
to, I guess, counter us or, or speak, you know, how we're diabolical or whatever the nonsense they want to come up with. Uh, and, you know, it only goes to show how hypocritical they are in the sense that they, they say that we spend uh, too much time on them when recently all you really hear coming out of their camp is apologetics against us. Uh, so, again, you know, in a lot of senses, they're very hypocritical. You, you can, you know, you judge, you, you judge a tree by its fruit. You know, the, the rotten fruits are there in the Neo Society. And you're seeing more and more people. Again, I can't tell you how many people, even over the, sa the, the past six months who I'll speak to live on the phone, you know, maybe it's 80 or 90 percent of them will not go back to Neo Society that following week. Because all you have to do is educate them, show, you know, show them the facts, demonstrate it to them, to where they can see this logically, clearly, and they understand now. Uh, and so, you know, that is what we pray for. Those who truly are of goodwill, who, are, who haven't uh, fallen for this uh, Marxist mentality that the new SXPX uh, runs by, who are not built up in pride, who truly want to arrive in goodwill and, and understand uh, the crisis in the new SXPX, these are the individuals that, you know, I can take time out with or, or anyone can. Uh, but, you know, nevertheless, in the end, you know, we have to uh, continue to pray uh, for the good of the church. We have to pray for Rome's conversion. We're not praying to be recognized. I don't wake up wanting to be recognized by Francis or Benedict. I wake up and want them to renege. To, uh, to renege on Vatican II, to renege on their modernism, right, for the sake and benefit of their own salvation. They're not holding the proper norm of Catholic faith. This is something that the, these pseudo-traditionalist -traditional, tr groups are blinded to. They just think that they're just making a few mistakes here or there, and that's not the case at all. That wasn't the position of uh, Archbishop Lefebvre, which brings up another point, uh, one of the arguments, uh, again, that this, this particular individual who is uh, trolling on Father Kramer's page tonight, who attends the Neo Society, they keep just throwing out that word, you're a state of a contus. You know, that's like the new propaganda now. Uh, well, first and foremost, we have to understand, even though that we teach it's error too, right? <laughs> uh, we have to understand that state of a contus in and of itself is not heretical or schismatic. So when they say that, uh, we, you know, what does that really mean? It, it doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't have any force behind it theologically. Uh, because it is a position, of course, that has never been infallibly condemned, even though we don't prescribe to it. Now, again, as I was telling you, they're, they're using this, this, this new word now, uh, practical state of a contest. And that's exactly what Archbishop Lefebvre was. Archbishop Lefebvre clearly taught we were run by modernist antichrists. He said Rome was modernist, right? So if the position is that we're... we're now uh, been hijacked by modernists at the council, right? And subsequently, we've had modernist popes. That means we simply hold to that common opinion of theologians concerning one who's teaching heresy, material heresy. And that is he would still remain over the church. Now, it is heresy, which means you have to keep your distance. It's poison. It needs to be seen as that. That's why we can't be integrated back into Vatican II New Church. Because we're not just dealing with some some flimsy, uh, you know, errors here and there that the Neo Society is trying to make it out to. We're dealing with a whole new religion. You don't integrate yourself into a whole new religion. <laughs> uh, and again, I've said this before, uh, you know, if it were possible, if the church would let you, I would tell you to go to an Orthodox church before I would tell you to go to the Vatican II New Church because they have more of the, they're more Catholic than Vatican II New Church is. As sad as that, you know, as sad as that sounds, and, uh, you know, obviously the church doesn't teach we can do that, but... Uh, for all intents and purposes, you understand uh, the point that I'm saying. So nevertheless, what I'm saying is that was Archbishop Lefebvre's position. He was, for all intents and purposes, a practical state of a contest. He said Rome was modernist, clearly indicating that down the road, these popes would be judged as such and removed. On the basis of that, not this impotent argument that the church is visible and now we can go back into the visible church, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. If, the, if what constitutes still... Uh, what is visible is still interiorly poisoned, you stay away from it, right? And that's the that's what we're saying. Uh, and so I hope everyone uh, can understand that. But nevertheless, uh, we had uh, Archbishop Lefebvre, who was very harsh. You know, the, the, these, these pseudo-treads, they really try to water down 
uh, who Archbishop really was, who, who Archbishop Lefebvre really was. Uh, and here's a, a quote from 1987. He says, The See of Peter and the posts of authority in Rome are now being occupied by Antichrists. The destruction of the kingdom of our Lord is being rapidly carried out, even in his mystical body here below. This is what has brought down upon our hearts persecution by the Rome of the Antichrist. This Rome, this modernist and liberal, uh, is carrying on its work on the destruction of the kingdom of our Lord. As a CC and a confirmation of the liberal theses of Vatican on religious liberty prove. Okay, so these people who keep saying, you know, they keep calling us, uh, you know, state of a contest, you can keep calling it. There, there's no theological force behind that. It was very clear what Archbishop Lefebvre had to say. He was very stern. He, he, very, he very clearly taught that Rome was modernist. They did not hold the Catholic faith. One more quote to uh, verify that. It's a, it's a more famous quote, but for those who are new. Uh, he, he stated in 1987, September 4th, Rome has lost the faith, my dear friends. Rome is an apostasy. These, these are not words in the air. It is the truth. Rome is an apostasy. They have left the church. This is sure. This is sure. Right? So we can't use the argument that the church is visible, right? So therefore we can go back into the church. If what constitutes being visible in, in from their perspective uh, is poisoned, you can't go in there. You can't go in there because the Catholic Church teaches you so, right? When heresy enters, we are taught to refrain, to get out of, right? St. Athanasius didn't sit around, and I, and I said this in a blog because this is essentially how the pseudo-traditionalists think. You know, if, if Remnant and Rorarte were back, and, and, and the new S S S SXPX were back in those times, you know, their position would be, well, you know, the Arians, you know, it, they're not 100% wrong. You know, they're, they're kind of right in what they say about the uh, about the nature of Christ. And let's, let's go into those buildings. We'll, we'll try to fix it. We'll try to correct it. Uh, and yet we don't, we know, this is not, as an example of church, in church history, how that played out. You know, St. Athanasius, doctor and father of the church, was just reiterating what the church has always taught. Once heresy enters, you you get out of that church. You refrain from that church until, as Archbishop Lefebvre pointed out, until the superiors get themselves right. Once the superiors get themselves right, then you can enter back in the church. Uh, it's not... You know, as laymen, we go into those churches and try to correct the pastor, you know, in terms of communion with them. Now, I will tell you from past um, history, when, you know, I would go down and evangelize, even even here in the Ohio Valley, uh, it's highly novus order, it's highly charismatic. You know, you go down there and you go into these buildings and you try uh, to help them understand that they're following a new religion. And you get you get the same nonsense. You know, get out of get out of our church. You know, you're schismatic, you're a heretic, and so that's why Archbishop Lefebvre called it Operation Suicide. Okay, so you have the new SXPX who's poison, not necessarily to the degree that these other pseudo traditionalist groups are, just people who attend the local, you know, Latin Mass who are completely inebriated in Vatican II. So they have more of the poison, but they're still poisoned nevertheless. So how is someone poisonous going to go in and and try to correct a more poisonous person. It's simply illogical. And again, the problem is, is the new SXPX doesn't even see their position as poison, and that's ultimately why we have to be resistant. They don't see it. We have to point it out to them. They don't like it, obviously. Uh, and so, uh, again, we can prove our position on paper. They cannot. Um, so my good friends, uh, you know, Archbishop Lefebvre went on to say, you know, furthermore, this was back in the, the mid-70s, he said, we are not of this new religion. We do not accept this new religion. We are of the religion of all time. We are, are of the Catholic religion. We are not of this uh, universal religion, as they call it today. This is not the Catholic religion anymore. We are not of this liberal, modernist religion, which has its own worship, its own priest, its own faith, its own catechism, its own ecumenical Bible. We cannot accept these things. They are contrary to our faith. It is an immense pain for us to think we are in a difficulty with Rome because of our faith. It's a truly dramatic situation. We have to choose an appearance of disobedience, for the Holy Father cannot ask us to abandon our faith. Uh, it is impossible. 
And again, this 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 ties into the whole uh, notion of appearance. Uh, you know, even coming from uh, the 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 spiritual life it is never good when you uh, fall to the sin of human respect and you, you're you're trying to have this appearance uh, that you're you know that you're Catholic. It seems very desperate. It's kind of like that that uh, desperate girl who's, who's trying to get your attention, and, and she's so desperate that you just become not interested in her at all. Speaking in terms of a possible dating relationship, when someone is that desperate, it just it looks really sad, and that's really how it looks with the new SXPX now. That they're trying to get so much acceptance. Hey, you know, hey, we're Catholic. We really are Catholic. You know, come come check us out. Uh, it looks really sad and it looks really desperate. It's certainly not spiritual at all. It's it's not pious. Uh, and so, unfortunately, uh, my good friends on many levels, uh, first and foremost, doctrinally, but then all this other support that simply supports what we're saying in terms of how the ESXPX has changed uh, and all the diab diabolical activity that's been going on at the top, which filters it fil filters on down, and now it just rubs off uh, on the layman, and the laymen are just as clueless as the the uh, prelates and those in the upper management now of the the new SXPX, and ultimately um, we arrive at the same conclusion. You know, we have to keep our distance now as the resistance. We, you know, just as much as they're saying, "Don't go to us." Trust me, we're we're telling people to stay away from them. Uh, and it's sad. It truly is a sad situation. But people, again, who are our objective, will see that what we're saying is the truth. We simply only reiterate what what Archbishop Lefebvre uh, truly had said. Uh, not this uh, contrived new position of Bishop Fillet and Menzingen. Uh, so I don't want to beat a dead horse. We could go on and on here with uh, further quotes. I just wanted to highlight to everyone how, please please don't be sucked into the pseudo-traditionalist propagandist poison that somehow this is a good thing, that by being recognized by modernist Rome, oh, we're, we're on our way to being Catholic. Uh, again, true charity dictates and demands that Rome repent. Uh, if I were the leader of the society today, or you know, that's what I would be calling for. Forget about trying to be recognized by heretics. You know, repent for the sake of your own soul. So again, they're thinking about themselves. It's self-love. It's selfish. This is what we want. We're not thinking. They're not thinking about uh, the conversion of uh, Francis. They're not. Because in their new position, they they don't think he's a modernist. They don't think he's a theological modernist, which is a big problem. And again, our fight is doctrinally. It's over doctrine. It's over the analysis and position. So, fortunately, my good friends, I, m I must tell you, as I always do, you know, we have to stop donating, quit donating your money to, to these churches until they get their act together. Stay out of the new SXPX chapels. Find yourself the, your nearest uh, independent or, uh, and or uh, resistance chapel, of course. Uh, there are plenty of other uh, priests out there uh, in terms of, you know, on a, on a worldwide scale. I know when we're break it, breaking it down here in the States, it becomes a little bit more difficult, but you may have to drive a couple hours. You may have to drive. I know plenty of people now who are driving four or five hours even, you know, on a weekly, bi-weekly basis, and I might be in that same uh, position uh, myself. Uh, given some, uh, given the situation that I am, I might find myself only being able to go once a month, sadly. Uh, and so th this is the times we live in, you know, so rather stay faithful and don't compromise. And this is the question I'm always asked concerning, you know, mass or whatever. It's better for you to stay home than to attend one of these compromising chapels of the new SXPX. And again, I think, what even happened today, I think this is going to be kind of a a wake-up call to even more priests for them to see and realize that the new SXPX is promoting this as a good thing. Because logically speaking, if they understood these particular priests that Archbishop Lefebvre clearly taught that Rome was modernist, the conciliar church is not the church, and here they are her heralding that you know the church is recognizing us and getting all giddy about it, as if this is a good thing that should be alarm bells going off there should be you know red flags going up this is not a good thing right rorarte uh chris ferrara who who is a neo cat himself he runs around and calls other people neo cats when he's no different he's just as poisoned 
He's just as poisoned as the rest of the Neocats he's, he's claiming to call out. Uh, and he's also another another one that's been a proponent of the so-called recognition. It's completely illogical. You can't follow these people. You cannot follow people who have no logicality behind the, the, their reasoning. Uh, the, the true traditionalists, those who are holding the Catholic faith at this point, need no recognition by those who don't hold the Catholic faith. Seeing an Athanasius didn't go around looking for recognition uh, from Liberius. In fact, he was only excommunicated uh, and exiled multiple times. Uh, you know, obviously Bishop Williamson has it down. You know, he's he's not looking. He's not looking for appearance, right? Which pertains to self-love. We don't care. We don't care what the modernists are saying about us. We're concerned about saving our own soul. We're concerned about teaching the true Catholic faith, getting people out of the conciliar church, which is the which is truly prudent at this time. It's not prudent to go into poison. It's truly prudent to to dictate to those who are in the poison, so to speak, to try to teach them and pull them out of it, right? Until the prelates get themselves right. Now, how this thing gets cleared up, obviously, you know, coming from the resistance position and Bishop Williamson nails it, it's through chastisement. It's not going to be because Bishop Fillet goes in there with his poisonous new position and tries to save the world, so to speak, save the church. It's going to be through chastisement, which is going to happen in a relatively short period of time, I will add. And so Bishop Williamson knows this, he understands that, and he knows it's going to be the hand of God that ultimately shakes up things. Uh, and so, and so, my good friends, that's that's essentially uh, where we arrive at, and that's basically what I wanted to uh, hammer into you uh, tonight uh, concerning the, the, this new news that has uh, just arrived onto the scene. Uh, as a matter of fact, when it came up on Twitter tonight, that the society posted that, and I, I left them a you know a nice little nice little note, you know, whoop de doo, you know, to be recognized by modernist heretics, you know, I'm sure Jesus is happy about that. I mean, that that doesn't make any sense, doesn't make any sense, my good friends. You know, Rome right now, the Concilier Church is not the Catholic Church. It has a new, a, it's a new religion, it's a new theology, has a new evangelization, it's a new church. Uh, even as declared uh, by John Paul II, Church of the New Advent, he said in Ecclesia Day, it has new doctrines submitted by John Paul II in the same Ecclesia Day. Uh, it's the cult of man, as Paul VI called it. it. It's called everything else but Catholicism. And this is what the, the, the Neo Society wants to integrate themselves in, all under the appearance that we're Catholic. Well, those who don't have the proper notion of what it is to even be Catholic can't deem someone else Catholic. And when they do, that's a problem. <laughs> and the society doesn't even pick that up. Sometimes That's how obtuse they are. And those who are following the neo-society, they're that obtuse, they, they don't even pick that up. It's not a good thing to be called Catholic by modernist Rome. And again, in terms of it, you know, maybe being an itchy response uh, by Francis to, to integrate them in uh, more quickly now, because I'm sure Francis knows himself, essentially, what's about to happen, all this propaganda about him resigning and stuff. You know, I have very little doubt in my own estimation, just in my own studies, that he is, objectively speaking, a, a Marxist, a, uh, a, a high-ranking Freemason. And so, you know, the plan is in place. I've been warning you all how this Master Jesus character will be coming up after him, and the, Francis is said to be working with him, hence all of that propaganda. And so that formal schism is right here. Uh, and so... Again, don't fall into that trap. If you have any questions, please contact me at Apostle uh, of Mary at Hotmail.com. And I, I should add, you know, while I'm doing this, uh, you know, with Tradcat Night, I, I am very structured on all of my social media outlets. So if you are listening to this, you know, and you are of the pseudo traditionalist uh, variety, again, if you're not here for the sake of understanding of what we're saying and just simply trying to reiterate, the pseudo-traditionalist position. You should just know your comments are not going to be seen. I know of the several blogs I did this past week, I can think of two or three individuals who obviously were going to SXPX who kept constantly posting under one of my blogs, and I constantly kept removing them, and I constantly kept asking, where are my comments going? Please have some common sense to know and understand your comments are not going to be seen on my page. You know, Just as, you, just as the Neo Society doesn't want us in your chapels, I don't want you posting on my page. I don't want your poison on my page. It's error, and I don't want people to see it. So please don't do it. Spare, spare your own time. Uh, so my good friends, we're going to close tonight uh, with a quick prayer. This radio show was obviously uh, a little bit uh, shorter. I know the last few ones have been 
uh, more winded, more like in the hour and a half to two hour range. So I apologize. It, you know, there's a lot of information we try to get out there, but this one I wanted to make uh, to give you a little break and to make it a, a little bit shorter. Again, please listen to these talks in your car, car you know, while you're driving, while you're out walking. You can listen to them, uh, you know, while you're doing housework in and around uh, the house. Uh, but again, I advise you, uh, you know, you really need to stay off these websites, R Remnant, Rorarte, you know, Dichi, you know, all these pseudo-traditional sites, you're going to be poisoned and you're going to have uh, an inconsistent mind. Uh, and that was the, the one good thing about Archbishop of Fev. He really was crystal clear in his thinking and in his logic. And that's something you don't find in these pseudo-traditionalist groups, especially the neo-society now. And we constantly keep finding, uh, catching Bishop Filet and his double talk. Right, because he's now trying to appease the pseudo traditionalists while trying to have the appearance that he's holding the Archbishop Lefebvre's position. So, in one breath, he might say, say something Archbishop Lefebvre said, and then he has to go and correct himself later, like his commentary on uh, Francis being a genuine modernist, because he's trying to appease both camps, right? And this is all due to self love. You know, forget about what people think about you. Keep a position, have a position, stop trying to, to pass yourself off as a Catholic. I don't care what people think about I don't care what the Neo Society has to say about me. I don't care what Bishop Filet has to say about me. I don't care. I, I work, my commission, you know, on behalf of our Lord and Our Lady is to do what I have to do, and I don't, I don't need their approval based upon that. Okay? And so, my good friends, we're going to close uh, with a quick prayer. And uh, let us pray to be loosened from the bonds of self-love. Let us continue to, in this dark hour, uh, understand that we can be and have no part, no part of compromise. Uh, we don't even have to take it to the level of heresy, uh, just on the basis that the new SXPX is a, a compromised hybrid pseudo-traditionalist group now. It is not it's red light on the new SXPX. It is it is you should not be attending their chapels. You will be poisoned. You'll be running into these individuals that I have to speak to on a daily basis who are just as clueless as those who are now teaching them. Honestly, that's really what it's all about. Uh, and so, uh, and so, my good friends, uh, let's continue to pray uh, for the sake of the church, for the sake of the Pope, for the sake of uh, the souls in purgatory. If you have any questions, again, please contact me at apostleofmaryhotmail.com. And if you can, uh, in your kindness and charity, please uh, donate. If you can, consider donating to Trad Cat Knight in this information war, where it's very vital that uh, we maintain the lead, if you will, in terms of getting our information out there to the to the most um, to the most people that we can before the great chastisements come, because we know they're close. And so my motivation. Uh, you know, quote unquote, is not to be the best. It truly is to just try to reach the most possible people we can so they simply will not be ignorant. So, the, so they will not be ignorant. So, potentially, we can get some conversions into the true traditional Catholic faith, which obviously is not Vatican II. Uh, and so, uh, I ask you in kindness and charity, if you can do so, contact me at apostlesmaryhotmail.com or go straight to the Tradcat Knight. Dot blogspot uh, dot com page and there is that function right on the upper right hand corner there for you via PayPal uh, which you can use or you can just it simply takes a check card transaction straight from your bank account uh, and again every ten dollars helps I thank you again for for listening in and until next time probably won't be for about another four or five days uh, I ask you to keep me in prayer Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Ave Maria.